Good morning, everybody. Oh, it really is a good morning. I love Sundays. I really, really mean that. Who else loves Sundays? Who loves coming to the presence of God? Some of you forgot to raise your hand. It's okay. You're in my... <laughs> it is just such a pro- privilege and pleasure to be with you. Um, some of you may not know me. It's, it's, there's always new people in the house, so it's such a wonderful thing. So for those who may not know, as Tony said, my name is John, and my wife, Carla, we pastored Lifespring Burntwood. Uh, she sends her love. She was here a couple of weeks ago. Who remember when Carla was here? Yeah, and oh my gosh, that word she brought absolutely wrecked me. <laughs> and um, hmm. we're in family right now, right? So I'm going to share a bit more family style. Is that okay? You with me with that? I want to see this as a living room time. Um, because God is, is clearly speaking this morning from, from what, he, what he put on my heart to share to a prophetic word that Tony shared with me this morning in pre-service prayer um, that just gave me clarity on a, on a thing. I was asking the Holy Spirit, oh, do I go that way or this way? And Tony literally said that I'm meant to lean in two different directions at the same time. And I'm like, yes, thank you, Jesus. That's clear direction for me. And um, I honestly want to start with this. Um, it's got nothing to do with my message. Is that all right? I want to honor the worship team. Are they still in the room? Some of you are. So, yeah. Um, because that was my, that was such a precious moment. Church, I hope you realize that was such a precious moment. And I'll tell you why. Because it was all about him. Did you, do you, did you hear the lyrics you were singing this morning? It wasn't about you. It wasn't about what you can get out of him. It's not what he's doing for you. It was all about him. Holy, holy, I exalt thee. No other name. He is the king. I'm making up lyrics now, but they're all true. And we were singing this this morning. And I'm, I'm going to be honest, all right? I felt immediately I need to just bow before my king. But I got some brand new white shoes on. I'm being, I, I told you I'm going to be real this morning. My, my in-laws literally bought these for me, and they were delivered outside my house, and they're like, they're for Sunday. <laughs> they think I need to up my shoe game, I think, is the idea. Um, and I'll be honest, anyone love their shoes? Anyone love trainers? You got passion. What is the number one thing you don't do with sh- white shoes? You, oh, you do not kneel. You don't get them dirty. You don't even walk outside with them. They're precious, they're holy ground. And um, <laughs> I'm, I, I'm putting this out, I literally was, I was right there. And we started to sing the second song. I'm sorry, I can't remember the lyrics right now because of my head. But it was all about him and I just felt I need to kneel before Jesus. And I stopped myself. My brain, my flesh stopped me and went, oh, shoes. And I, I'm serious, this is this morning. I repented right there. And I'm actually telling you this because I feel I need to. And I went, nothing should stop me from kneeling before my king. Nothing. And you might think, oh, it's just shoes. That's funny. But there's always something in our lives that stops us kneeling before the king. And recognizing holy moments and being abandoned before him and kneeling before him. So I knelt as fast as I could. And... Praise the Lord, they're not scuffed. But I don't actually care. I mean that. Because that's not as important as him. It's all about him. It's all about Jesus. Church, if you get anything this morning, I have a message prepared. And all throughout this morning, I'm just like, I don't, we'll get to it at some stages. <laughs> but I just want to talk about Jesus. Because I'm broken for him afresh. And something, the Lord has been doing something in me personally where I had this, revel- this realization. I was in a time of prayer with God and, and um, I was actually doing garden work at our building because um, I enjoy it. So I was outside and I was mowing the lawn. I was um, doing the hedges and stuff like that. It was a nice sunny day. This was a couple weeks ago. 
And I was just, and, and my brain thought, ah, oh, it's a great opportunity to listen to some messages, some podcasts, maybe a bit of worship, etc. And I just felt Jesus say to me, why don't you just hang out with me? And I, I realized I had this moment with the Lord where I'd been doing the Christian walk without spending time with Christ. And I'm not saying that I was doing heretical things or anything like that. I was still reading my word and preparing and preaching and praying for people and, and doing the pastoral stuff. But, but I realized it's so easy to be attracted to, to the Christian walk rather than be attracted to Christ sometimes. Because Christ will slow you down. Christ will make you near. Just a holiness, a reverence before him, a realization that actually all this stuff is secondary to him and his presence. And there's just been a theme recently. I've been blessed to be at different opportunities here at Reclaim. It was shared multiple times, just the importance of going back to the simplicity of the gospel, going back to the realization of Christ himself. And at different other events I've been to, there's just been a central, the central theme of going back to the simplicity of falling in love with Jesus all over again. And being undone in his presence. And Tony shared that word this morning that some of us don't feel, um, I don't want to butcher it, Tony, so please don't feel holy. Don't feel like they can, can come into his presence. That, that was kind of the gist, or at least that's what spoke to me. And um, what happened to me last week at our church in Live Spring Burnt Woods, um, some of you may have watched the live stream. We're, we're always honored that you guys are following, but... Some of you may know I ugly cried on stage for a good 20 minutes. <laughs> and, um, and that's a whole other journey. And for no other reason than I was talking about Jesus. And he just broke me. And I'm, I want to share today on the authority of the name of Jesus Christ. And that, that's, that's, my, that's what we're going to talk about. But, but what happened last week, is the Holy Spirit told me very clearly, um, he actually woke me up in the middle of the night, he's like, I need you to tell your church about your salvation the moment you said yes to Jesus. And I'm being honest with you, it didn't fit my message. It didn't fit the sermon I had prepared. And so I was wrestling with like, where do I slot it in? When would be a good time? When's a landing point? You know, preacher stuff. You, can't, you want to deliver a message. You want to engage with people. And there's nothing wrong with that. But, but the Holy Spirit had said very clearly to me, I need you to start with this. And I'll make the rest. Don't worry about the rest. Start with this. And this week I've been sharing with Carla. I was like, babe, I feel that I need to share it again at Life Spring Wolverhampton. And she's like, does it fit your message this week? I'm like, no, not at all. <laughs> And when you're supposed to share it, I feel again that the Lord's telling me to start with it. And so I want to share with you, and I want to be very clear. I brought these tissues, not prophetically, um, but I was aware of what happened last week to me when I shared on this. And tears or no tears doesn't change the importance of what I'm going to share. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not wanting to be dramatic here. I want to tell you my experience with Jesus. So... I grew up in a Christian home. Uh, my parents were a missionary family. My parents pastored a church in Paris. Uh, but I would often come over to England for Christian summer camps. And when I was about 12 or 13, I, I was at one of these camps. And I had grown up, grown up Christian. And I, I knew who Jesus was. I read my Bible. I was a good Christian kid. Um, but I couldn't say that I had my own personal deep revelation of Christ in my life. I had never had I'd said yes to Jesus of like I'll follow you kind of thing but kind of because that's what's expected but I hadn't had that personal this I get it moment um and we were in a tent as many only the UK does Christian camps all in tents it's ridiculous but I was at this in this tent and there was a time of worship going on and I can picture it all still right now. I can't say I was blown away by the worship. I w it wasn't a holy moment in that sense for me. Um, but while worship was going on, um, a, a gentleman, his name's Martin Rowe. 
It's crazy. I'm terrible with names, but his name is steered in my head. And um, he got up and he, he did a salvation appeal for everyone in the room. I don't know, a couple hundred youth in there. And I, a lot of people went up, and I, I'll be honest, I didn't. I kind of thought, I'm good, I've, I've got this, I know Jesus, yeah, I've done that before kind of thing. So I'm just in the, in the tent. And suddenly, in the middle of worship, this, I had a vision, and I want to be as clear as I can with this. It wasn't, I didn't have, actually have my eyes closed. It was as if in front of me, I saw a TV screen appear. I could still see the rest of the room. It, it's hard to put into words a, a moment that surpasses our understanding on earth. It was a spiritual moment, and I just had this, this vision is the best way I can describe it, and it was like this screen, and I was just looking at this. And I saw Jesus. I didn't see a face, but I knew it was Jesus. In 12, 13, I see him being beaten and broken. And... Um, and have you ever seen the passion of Christ? Christ? I'll be honest, I've not been able to watch it, not because I don't think it's a great thing to watch or anything like that, please hear me, because I had an encounter where I saw it for myself. I don't ever need to see it again. Because I watched, ah. <laughs> I had been in fights before as a kid. And I'd been around bloody fights. Jesus wasn't just tapped on the wrist, guys. He was beaten and broken and bones were shattered and skin tearing off. And I'm watching this. He's being whipped with metal. I need you to understand, I hadn't really studied at the time. I didn't know all these details. I was just having this, I could see it in front of me. And then there was a crown that was put on his head and it was thorns and it was smashed into him. It was violent and brutal. And I was crying as I was watching this. And then he was put on a cross and he was nailed. And I, I'd always seen the pictures of Jesus kind of like this. As if he just took it like, no big deal. Right? That's how we represent it. It was just kind of like, do your worst. I'm fine. This doesn't hurt me. This isn't what I saw. I saw him crying in pain. I saw him screaming when the nails went in. And he was beaten. And he was pierced. And he was on this cross and he was crying and it zoomed into the tears and inside of every tear there was a name written. It was rolling down his cheek and as soon as it hit the ground, the, that person was free. And I watched what felt like an eternity. You need to understand, Jesus wasn't up there for two minutes. He endured it all. I, I just kept on watching these tears run down his face with names coming, rolling down inside these tears and being set free. And then suddenly I saw my name. I can still see it. I saw my name. And it rolled down his cheek. And he looked at me in the vision. He locked eyes with me. He said, all of this is worth it for you. And the tear hit the ground. And the vision ended and I was free. I ran to that altar. And Martin Rowe prayed for me. I got filled with the Holy Spirit. I started speaking in tongues. And here's the thing. I wish I could say I'd never looked back. It's not true. Some of you know my story. I, I was a good Christian kid on the surface. 
to lead worship. I'd pray the prayers. I knew how to do the walk, but until I was 18 and I actually went to Bethel, I, I lived two lives. You know, the Monday to Saturday life where no one knew what I was doing, and then the Sunday performance. I did love God. I did. But I was still intertwined and attracted to the world. And, but I never looked, but what I can say is I never looked back from under that understanding that Jesus really loves me. He really loves you. You have to understand your name was written in those tears. Each one of you. You were set free at a really high price. It cost him everything. And he he said he's willing. It's all worth it just for you. I'm starting this way simply because I can, I can deliver a message that's fine, but I can never do what Jesus did. I could never say something more important than the words of Jesus, which is, I love you. You are so precious to me. You are worth my suffering. And normally we do altar calls at the end, but I'm just, I'm going with what I feel the Holy Spirit is saying. I want to give an opportunity right now. Maybe some of you have never said yes to Jesus in your life in this room. I want to give an opportunity right now. You may not have all the understanding, but I need you to know Jesus died for you. Jesus loves you. He paid such a high price for you. He was beaten and broken, stabbed, nailed, so that you could walk in freedom so that you can have a relationship with the Father. And I want to give an opportunity. I don't know, even if there is anyone in this room, but I want to first give an opportunity. If you never said yes to Jesus, I'm asking you to be brave right now and just put your hand up. Now is the moment to give your life to Christ. I'm going to give it a moment. If there's anyone in this room, or if you're watching online and catch up or not uh, on live, please message in. I know the team will, will look at that. We want to pray for you. We want to lead you to the Father this morning. The second thing I want to do is I'm going to ask those who, as I was sharing that, there was something happening inside of you where you were just like, I know he died for me, but I've never actually thought about it. I don't know if I'm worth that. I don't feel like I was worth what you just described. I'm going to ask you to stand. I want to pray for you right now. I know we normally do altar calls at the end. I know this is an exposing moment, but I know there are people in this room that you have struggles. You don't feel like you're worthy of what he endured on the cross. I'm asking you to be brave and to stand so we can pray together right now so God can set you free of that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you, Jesus. Church, I want to encourage you. Just close your eyes for a second, please. Focus on you. No one else is watching you. I want to be clear here. You have the choice to walk out the same or different this morning. I'm asking you. If you want freedom from shame, if you want freedom from that feeling like you're not worthy of what Jesus did at the cross. I'm asking you to stand. I'm just going to take one more moment. Bless you, those who have stood. Bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Keep your eyes closed. For those who have stood, put your hand on your heart. Actually, everyone, can you just put your hand on your heart? Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you. You took all of that at the cross for us. That when you look at us, you see us as worthy of that price. No matter what we've done, no matter if we've walked away at times, you would have done it just for those, just for you. He would have done it just for you. Father, I pray right now for any shame that has wrapped any of these wonderful people that you would set them free right now from that shame, that they would know without a shadow of a doubt that they 
are loved by you, that you care for them, that you actually know them better than they know themselves, and yet you say they're loved and they're worthy. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for what you're doing in their hearts. I release you from shame in the name of Jesus Christ. You can be seated. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. I told you we were going to do living room style a bit differently today. You okay? <laughs> can you grab your Bibles, please? <clears throat> Um, sorry, I didn't tell you where to turn. <laughs> I'm already there. Why are you not there? Come on. Acts 4, please. <clears throat> Actually, my apologies. If you can turn one chapter before, let me read something in Acts 3 first. Acts 3, verse 4. We'll start there. Give context for the Acts, um, Acts 4 afterwards. So Acts 3, verse 4. We'll start. For context here, this is after the day of Pentecost. And we have Peter and John are going to the temple to worship. And it's where we know the very well-known passage, excuse me, where there's the lame man begging in front of the gate, beautiful. Excuse me. And, um, and we'll, we'll just read this passage. Uh, Verse 4, Peter and John looked at him intently, and Peter said, look at us. The lame man looked at him, at them eagerly, expecting a gift. But Peter said, I don't have any money for you, but I'll give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. Then Peter took the lame man by the right hand and helped him up. And as he did, the man's feet and ankle bones were healed. And strengthened. He jumped up, stood on his feet, and began to walk. Then, walking, leaping, and praising God, he went into the temple with them. Praise the Lord. You can turn now to Acts 4. For context, for time's sake, my time's ticking along. Um, I'm just going to give context. After this moment, Peter addresses the whole crowd and he preaches a gospel message to them. And uh, Peter and John get arrested by the religious leaders, and they're put in prison, and and they're there overnight. And the next morning, they're brought before a tribunal, and they get questioned. And we're going to jump into this passage while they're being questioned. We'll start verse 5, Acts 4, verse 5. The next day, the council of all the rulers and elders and teachers of religious law met in Jerusalem. Annas, the high priest, was there along with Cephas, John, Alexander, and other relatives of the high priest. They brought, they brought in the two disciples and demanded, by what power or in whose name have you done this? Other versions will say, in, what, in whose authority have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, this is key, Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, leaders and elders of our nation, are we being questioned because we've done a good deed for a crippled man? Do you want to know how he was healed? Let me clearly state to you, all the people of Israel, that he was healed in the name and power of Jesus Christ from Nazareth, the man you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead. For Jesus is the one referred to in the scriptures where it says, the stone that you build as rejected has now become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else. There is no other name in all of heaven for people to call on to save them. The members of the council were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, for they could see that they were ordinary men who had no special training. They also recognized them as men who had been with Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want to talk about the authority of the name of Jesus. And I'm going to cut it down and simplify it as best I can this morning with you. Um, Peter had a revelation of the power and authority of the name of Jesus Christ. He had a revelation because 
they've had this moment at Pentecost. The Holy Spirit, the power of God has fallen and many salvations break out. And we're here now at the very next, let's call it chapter in their walk with this. They're discovering it. They're figuring it out. The Holy Spirit has now come upon them. How is this going to play out? And they encounter, first thing they do is they go to the temple and they encounter this man. And it's the famous fashion. Jesus, and Peter says to him, in the name of Jesus Christ, stand up and walk. Peter hadn't had any other teachers come around him and go, okay, I think what we're going to do now is when we pray, you know, Jesus has gone up to heaven, so what we're going to do now is when we pray, let's make sure we mention him as much as possible. When we pray, you know, I think this is the formula of how we're going to do it. That, there was none of that. Jesus has said, in my name, you will cast out demons. You will heal the sick. You will cleanse the lepers. Jesus had told them, had taught them, there is an importance of my name. But now Jesus is gone to be with his father. And the Holy Spirit has come down. And the power of the Holy Spirit is moving inside the disciples. And Peter has this encounter moment with, with a problem. There's a lame man in front of him. What's he going to do? What has he got to offer? He even says himself, I have no silver. I have no gold. I've got nothing to offer you physically. No there's nothing I can do for you, but I do have something. I have a revelation of the name of Jesus Christ. I have an understanding that actually, when I say his name, things change. Things break loose. Healings take place. Demons flee because they know that name. They know who that is. Problems start to dissolve. Solutions start to appear because the name of Jesus Christ is the authority of the Father. All right, this side is awake. Come on, guys. You got this. The authority of the name of Jesus Christ will change your life. Will change your life. It changed Peter's life. And what happens is that they get questioned. Now, I want to give us some context. For time's sake, I'm going to quote some passages rather than turn to everything. Is that okay? But you can please look at them for yourself. I want to look back at Peter a little bit. This is my ending point. Acts 4 is my ending point. I want to work backwards with you. Is that okay? And this one I am going to read. Matthew 16 you want to turn there. Matthew 16, 13. It says, now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the son of the man, is, oh, sorry, the son of man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. So he said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter, here he is again, replied, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. What was Jesus saying? I'm going to do this very quickly with you, but the Greek word that translates as Peter is Petros. Now, Petros is actually the word used for a small rock or a pebble. This is not the word for a cornerstone. That is the word Petra. And Jesus says, you, Peter, Petros, so, sorry. I lost my passage there. You are Peter, you are Petros. And on this rock, Petra, I will build my church. So what is the cornerstone? If Peter is not the cornerstone of the church, are you following me? For a lot of you, this is a new teaching, I know that. Peter himself, the person, is not the cornerstone. So what is? What was it that Peter did or said that is the, the cornerstone, the Petra, on which Jesus Christ will build his church, which is what? His body here on earth. It's the revelation of Christ. It's the revelation of the anointed one, of the Messiah. Peter literally says, you are the Christ. You are the son of the living God. 
He had a revelation of the, the power and authority that was coming in, Jesus, in the form of Jesus Christ. And Jesus, he said, that right there, that revelation that I am the Christ, that is what I can, I'm going to build my church on. That's it right there. And Peter was the first one of the disciples to have that revelation. But then we follow on. What happens next to, to Peter? We know very well. I think it's between four and seven verses later. He get, Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. So he didn't, he didn't carry on very strong at that moment. But something happens, and it's well known. Jesus prophesies that Peter will deny him three times. We know this passage. And sure enough, Peter says three separate occasions, I don't know him. I'm not with him. When questioned as Jesus is being hung. He has this moment three times where he denies knowing, walking with Jesus. And... The story carries on, again, the story carries on, and, and we find ourselves in John 21, where Peter is fishing, and the resurrected Christ comes to him, and he's on the shore, and we know the passage well, and Peter jumps out of the boat, and he goes to him, and there's this exchange, it's a bit further on, they, they have dinner first, You've got to have a good dinner. They have dinner first, but then Jesus has a conversation with Peter. Peter, do you love me? Of course I love you. Then feed my sheep. And they have this beautiful exchange, and, and there's many things we could talk about, the redemption aspect that Jesus did with Peter in that moment. But I want to talk about the feed my sheep. If you love me, feed my sheep. What was it that Peter had to feed body of Christ. See, I, I've heard it so many times of, you know, the heartbreaking reality that Jesus, sorry, that Peter denied even knowing Jesus and how horrible that is. And, and guys, we need to, to never pretend like we don't know Jesus. Yes, that, that's very true. I'm not going against that. But there was something so much deeper happening because Peter was the one who had the revelation that that man was the Christ. So when Peter was saying, I don't know him, he wasn't just saying, oh, we're not friends. Oh, I don't know that guy. He was stepping away and walking away from the revelation that he had been given by God that that is the Christ. It's much deeper than just, oh, I don't know Jesus. It's, I am choosing out of fear to walk away from my understanding that that right there is the son of the living God. It's so, do you understand? It's so much deeper than just going, no, no, we're not friends. No, this is, I was given, Peter was given the revelation that Christ is here among us. That all authority is in him. And out of fear, out of worry that he's going to get punished and accused and brought into the same situation Jesus was in, he was like, no, I walk away from that revelation. See, I think a lot of us have walked away from the revelation of the authority of Jesus Christ. We, it's not that we've forgotten that the name of Jesus is powerful, it's we've stopped using it. And maybe it's because you used it and it didn't work out for you. But a lot of us use it like it's this uh, magic wish, like abacadabra. So I prayed, there's a situation, and in Jesus' name, we kind of like... Toss a little Jesus name grenade out after the end of every prayer because we think that that's the magic formula that works. Instead of going, no, in the name of Jesus Christ, stand up and walk. In the name of Jesus Christ, salute, problem, you will not invade my house. In the name of Jesus Christ, depression, you will not enter this family. In the name of Jesus Christ, financial situation, you will break loose. There's an authority in the name of Jesus, but a lot of the church, with a big C, not you guys, you're perfect, but the rest of them, you know, they struggle because... <laughs> Oh, uh -huh. Can we edit that out? Yeah. I'm kidding. We forget that actually the authority of the name of Jesus is something to stand on. That that revelation is the most powerful weapon you actually have in your arsenal. Do you understand that? Like, please come and get prayer from your pastors and other leaders. That's wonderful, but that's not your weapon. Uh. 
Oh, some of you didn't like that. All right. <laughs> That's not your weapon. Your weapon is the authority of the name of Jesus Christ. The one who lives inside of you, the, one, the Holy Spirit that comes inside of you, the, the Holy Spirit is the power, the authority is Jesus Christ. You need power and authority. You need to get them together. And so we now have Peter, who's been redeemed by the Lord, who's regained that revelation that that is the Christ, that is the anointed one, that is the Son of God. There is power in his name. And then what happens? He gets filled with the Holy Spirit. What was the first word I said? Look out for it. It says, verse 8, then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit. Guys, I don't have time, but oh, you want to get filled with the Holy Spirit. Oh, I promise you. (laughs) Because otherwise you have a good name, but you have no power to back it. You need the power. The power is the Holy Spirit. Filled. He said, filled with the Holy Spirit. It didn't say Peter, you know, having had a new revelation, or Peter, then Peter, having read a good book about Jesus, then Peter, having listened to a good sermon by John, it was the best one he ever had. I'm just seeing if you're awake. No, it says, Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, stood up and said to them, if you're asking in whose authority we did this, Let it be known. What does it say? Let me read that again, actually. Let me clearly state to you and to all the people of Israel. He wasn't, he chose not to just address a few in the room. The church needs, with a big C, the church needs to be declaring the name and authority of the name of Jesus Christ across the Great Britain. He addressed an entire nation And said, it's the name of Jesus Christ. It's in the authority of the name and the power of the name of Jesus Christ. That this man was healed. The one that you crucified. The stone that you build is rejected and has now become the cornerstone. Here we go again. That cornerstone. What is the cornerstone? It's not himself. He is not saying, and that is me. No, he's saying, it's this revelation. All authority. Has been given to me because of the, sing- the name of Jesus Christ. And I get to stand in that authority. And whatever's coming my way, I get to stand in that authority. I want to give you an example here. Um, <laughs> if I go onto the main road out there, what's, it, what's the main road called? Chaplash, thank you. And I decide to walk onto the street, I put my hand out. How many cars do you think are stopping before I get hit? (laughs) Now, what if a police officer steps onto that street, puts their hand out? You want to bet that anyone's going to hit that? Why? Because there's an authority that comes in the badge. There's an authority that comes when you carry the name of Jesus Christ. And I'm not just talking like an abracadabra, because what was the clear statement that the, the elder said, the sorry, the leader said? They recognized that these men were untrained and uneducated, but that they had been with Jesus. See, a lot of us want to carry the name of Jesus without spending time with Jesus. We want to use the authority. We want the the benefits without the process. I want the benefits of I I can stand and speak the name of Jesus, and if there's sickness coming, I use the name of Jesus, and when there's a problem in my family, I use the name of Jesus, and we're throwing it out. And Jesus is like, hey, can I come with? Do, can, are we going to get any time together, or are you just using the badge? I'm going to give you another example. Oh, she's not in the room. Leah Povey, she's got a badge. Delmar Brown, he's got a badge. If he stands on that street, and he puts that badge out, and he stops that traffic, he has that authority. Now, what if I take Del's badge? If I take his badge, and I grab it, and I stand on the street and I stop someone. Am I, am I allowed to do that? No, why? I'm holding the same badge he was holding. What's the difference? He's been given that authority because he actually comes under that authority. There's a mission on our lives, the great commission on our lives. But to walk in the mission, the authority comes in the mission, okay? Jesus' authority came in his mission and this is a Chris Valentin quote. I wish it was mine. It's a Chris Valentin quote. In order to walk in the mission, you have to submit to his mission. 
Let me try that again. It's all right. The authority, <laughs> the authority of Christ came in the mission. What authority has been given to us? The commission. Go into all the world, preach the gospel, heal the sick, cast out demons, cleanse the lepers. Teach others what I have taught you. We often forget that one. Create disciples. The authority came right there. Now, you want to walk in that authority, you need to submit to the mission. It's not, oh, well, I want to do ministry like this. Or I want to do this over here. Or I want to do this over here. No, I'm walking under that submission. I'm walking in submission. I'm coming in low. And I'm going after everything that God has for me. Because I'm coming into a place where actually all my worship, not just my singing, all my worship is holy. Glory to you. Your name above all names. Everything is about you. But so many of us walk with our dreams, our desires, our passions. We want to do it our way. We want to toss out a little Jesus Christ grenade at situations. And then we wonder why they don't work. Well, did you pray? Yeah, I said in Jesus Christ like three times and he didn't come. And we do it like I'm summoning this genie. But it's not. It's walking in unity with him. It's walking alongside him. It's being filled with the Holy Spirit and walking in the power and authority of the name of Jesus Christ. And I think for a lot of us as the church, we need to reclaim that understanding that everything is under his authority. Everything is under his authority. If you think the pro- there's a problem with the elections or the country or anything like that, and that God doesn't have a plan or a solution, you're, you're missing the point. <laughs> You, 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 we, we need to understand, maybe you're looking at your life, your family, and it's chaos. And you're just like, well, I guess this is just my life. No, stand in the authority that Christ has given you. Stand in that place and say, my, in my house, the enemy has no foothold. I will not give him a foothold in this house. I'm protecting this home. I'm protecting my marriage. Oh, my marriage is too difficult. Submit it unto Christ and see what happens. Come into that place where you just come. Jesus, I need you so desperately. I need you in everything. And I, I need to be filled with the Holy Spirit afresh because I need to walk in the authority that Christ has given us. I've got a mission. Do you know you have a mission? Or do you just want to fill a Sunday morning seat? None of you answer. Don't worry. <laughs> like, but, but that's the reality. We're not just church goers. We're called to be kingdom builders. You can't do that without walking in the authority of the name of Jesus Christ. And you can't do that if you don't even understand what it is. And the only way to discover, how did Peter have that revelation? Because he walked with the man. He walked with Jesus. And he watched him operate. And he watched how he lived and how he acted. And in that moment, it's very clear, Peter didn't create his own revelation. In that moment, he was open for the Father. Jesus even says, God has revealed this to you. If you have a problem in your life and you can't find a solution, heaven has a solution for you. But you need to be walking alongside him to listen. To pay attention. And walk in that authority. Be filled afresh by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. I'm going to ask the worship team to come up. Um, we're not going to turn off yet. I, um, <clears throat> I've, uh, I, I've been praying a dangerous prayer recently, um, which is pretty much, uh, in essence, God use me and test me. Very dangerous. Um, and... I, I, I felt last week um, when I was at our church preaching in, in Burntwood <clears throat> that he was recalibrating some people. And I'm feeling that here as well. That he's recalibrating, he's refocusing people who have felt like they've drifted away from, from the pursuit of Christ. And there's just a reality, you just feel this, this thing inside where you know there's a bit of an emptiness. It doesn't mean you've lost your faith, it doesn't mean you know, you, you're, you're doing unrighteous things, it just means 
you know you've not been actually pursuing his presence. You've not actually been acting on what he asked you to do. Maybe you've not been speaking like he's been asking you to speak. And I want to give him a moment right now because there's grace in this moment. I really feel there's grace in this moment to to step back into the will of God for your life. To step back into the pursuit of God for you. Because he's always pursuing you, but a lot of the times we forget. I feel the Lord is just reconnecting people. Can I ask you all to stand, please? We're just going to do ministry for a moment here. If that was you, can you just raise a hand where you are? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Look, I'm going to ask you to be brave and, and bold. I've seen your hands. Can you start making your way to the front, please? And I'm going to explain why I'm saying the front. It's not to expose you or put you on show. It's because it's, a place, it's what we call the altar. It's coming before God, and if, and if we fill the front, you can go to the sides, but I want you to just come before him. Do a physical act to represent a, a spiritual heart. Just fill in from the front, guys, and to the sides. Thank you. Mike, if you could just fill people in. Thank you, guys. Keep coming. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just keep filling. Is there anyone else? You're just coming before the Lord right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Just fill in whatever you can. The team will sort you out. If we need some space, you can go to the sides. That's fine. We'll come find you guys if you want to fill in. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Holy Spirit. The, the word I had over you I, what I actually saw was, was you had one foot on a path that felt comfortable and one foot on a path that just you weren't sure of what kind of terrain it was going to be and, and the Lord was saying I need you to trust where I'm taking you I need you to be willing to step out of comfort and put both feet on the terrain that you're not sure what it's going to look like. But I've got you. I've got you, son. I've got you, daughter. I'll never forsake you. I'll never abandon you. But I want, I need you to walk in what I've got for you. It's just redirecting you right now. And actually, as you took those steps on this terrain that you didn't know what it was going to look like. The path was smooth. And I feel that the Lord is actually going to give some, he's going to answer some questions and there's areas of breakthrough that are going to happen quickly in your lives. There's things that you've been contending for for a long time and you're going to start implementing what we've been talking about. You're going to start declaring the authority of the name of Jesus Christ over that situation. I need you to not just hear this as a Sunday morning preach. This is a, this is a tool that is actually the foundation of how the church was built and is built. It's the authority of the name of Jesus Christ. It's understanding that there is only one name above all names. That every knee will bow before Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I bless all these amazing sons and daughters of yours. Holy Spirit, that they would be filled afresh with the Holy Spirit. Ministry team, if you could just start laying hands on them as we go. Just fill the fresh with the Holy Spirit. Fill them afresh right now, Holy Spirit. Give them clarity, give them direction. Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Open the doors. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I am. Um, I have quite a strange, um, or at least in my world, strange um, word of knowledge. And I saw someone this morning putting out laundry outside. 
Is there anyone in this room? Can you just raise your hand, please? This morning, you actually put laundry outside to dry. There's a few of you. Okay, keep your hands. I, I actually saw the, the, what you were using is that umbrella style. I don't know its technical name. I'm looking at Ursula. What's this? Rotary dry. That's right. Is that, did one of you have that as, your, as what you use? Anyone? Yeah? Okay. Those three people who raised their hands, can you just come up as well? I, have, I felt I had a word for you. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Does anyone have... <laughs> I told you I'm, going, I'm stepping out. I deliberately... Does anyone have a number plate that starts BZ? Can you raise a hand if that's you? Your number plate starts BZ. If you're not sure, you can go outside and find out. I'm kidding. Please don't. Is there anyone? That's okay. Does anyone have BZ as letters in their number plate? I'm not saying I'm always perfect. I was not. Just B and Z in their number plate. Can you just raise a hand? There is someone. You. You stood earlier for something, didn't you? BGZ, okay, amazing. Coming back for you. For those who, who stood for the, um, the laundry this morning, what I felt the Lord was saying <clears throat> is as you were putting out the laundry, um, that he was going to cleanse and clean things that were spoken over your family that the Lord was actually going to cleanse and, and the, the, there was certain curses and things spoken over your family. Thank you, Jesus. That, were, um, that the Lord was redeeming and the curses were ending and the generation after generation of suffering in these specific areas was ending. And I feel that the Lord is saying right now to stand in the authority of the name of Jesus over your family, to declare Jesus over my family. We're going to sing this song in a second. This, um, this, I speak Jesus. Thank you, team. And in there we say, I, I, I declare the name of Jesus over my family. And I want you to stand over your family and your family line and say, the blood of Jesus cleanses all curses. You know, actually, I'm, I'm declaring this for this. If you know, I want you to take this for yourself. If you know there are things that have been spoken over your family, our family is stupid. Our family will never get a good job. Our family can't have higher education. Our family is just an angry family. My family is this. My family is that. If that's been spoken over you, I want you to just be brave. Just put your hand up right now. If you need to claim that over your family, all right. Right now, just I need you to just hold, just do physical something. If you need to kneel before the Lord, if you need to just put a hand on your heart, whatever it is, and just say, I speak the name of Jesus over my family. Right now, I speak the name of Jesus over my family. Thank you, Jesus. I speak the name of Jesus over my family. Use the authority that has been given you, the authority of the name of Jesus Christ. The Father, these curses end with you. These things spoken over family, they end with you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to release, I realize we're over time, I'm going to release the team to just sing. But stay in this place of worship just for a moment. If you have to go and get your kids, please go and get your children. Bless you.